So if there's anything that I've experienced throughout my life is not just imposter syndrome, right? Um, and some of that's innate, right? It comes from within. I, you know, why, why am I, you know, worth the investment either from somebody giving it to me who I respect or my career? Maybe I don't think I'm, I actually have what it takes in order to succeed, right? You, you may feel the same way. You'll find that, or at least in my experience, I find that cultural guilt, right, whether it be a Christian guilt for sinning, you know, having impure thoughts, right, it, they drive a an extreme anxiety. And that anxiety, uh, in a lot of ways, traps us from, I think, teasing out our best selves and teasing out really what... Uh, differentiates us right so say in the in the case of a career right wh why should I hire you uh, I have typing skills I have customer service skills okay well what does that mean like anyone can say that they've been doing customer service anyone can say that they can type uh, I can think analytically okay well that sounds interesting flesh that out yeah, wh what does that mean well I can take a process I can look to see if I can improve that process in any way by understanding the different variables that go within executing each different step. Is there a way to perhaps uh, lessen the amount of waste, whether that be time or resources, and or maybe cutting through bureaucrat uh, bureaucratic red tape in order to eliminate uh, a step? Right? Perhaps there's a there's a step that goes to an entirely different department for a signature just to come right back, and now that department or the reason for it perhaps budget constraints have caused that department to really no longer be relevant in this decision, right? So things need to be re reinvestigated. But you'll find, again, in my experience, uh, and I suspect in yours as well, that not only are we battling our own confirmation bias, but w the cultural guilt really handcuffs us and prevents us from advocating for ourselves in the best manner possible. Right, and so why should I hire you? Okay, well, this is a time for you to advocate for yourself, and certainly you can show some humility, right? You don't need to talk about how amazing you are, but this is not a time for you to couch your skills and like weak speak, right? Don't don't try to don't try to qualify your skills in the sense of like perhaps aiding the idea of your imposter syndrome, right? If you really think that you have the skills to do it. Or even if you th don't have the skills currently, you think that you have the ability to gain those skills, well, then act confidently. Right? Th this is an interview. Interviews, the uh, interviewing manager understands that you are putting on your best foot. And while your best foot is appreciated at work, it's really not expected. I mean, it would be nice if you did give it. You may not be able to have that ability because people understand that a, in the interview, in some ways, you stretch the truth. Right, because it's it's hard to really, well, and maybe not even just stretch the truth, but stretch the quantifiable truth. Right, there's a lot of soft skills. There's a lot of things that you bring that just aren't documented, and this is the time for you to talk about that. And so, when I say stretch the truth, you can literally be truthful about what you did, but you can stretch the truth as far as how you were, were acknowledged about it. And so, if you feel that you have real skills that you bring that are the reason why perhaps you got a job or the reason why perhaps you got a promotion, well then figure out a way again to advocate for those. And I would say the biggest way to advocate for yourself really is a resume. And a lot of people really don't uh, appreciate the amount of time that you should take to craft a resume. And crafting a resume is something that you, you should probably have a, a template that has about um, 80% to 90% uh, similarities, right? You're going to change a few things here. You know, you might change, um, you might change some of your work history depending on uh, how hyper relevant versus not it is. You may change some of the way in which you quantify your uh, your resume, and you got to understand that there's no longer an HR manager that looks through this information and scans it for relevant skills right this goes through basically a word search program that's just looking for keywords and if it stands out then it gets flagged if it gets flagged then the HR manager will then go ahead and pass it on right 
And so how do you fl how do you get your resume flagged? Well, keywords are a great way to do that. And uh, a good way to consider those keywords, one is an opening statement, right? If you look at my resume here, you'll see you know research and communications data coordinator, right? The, the point of this for me, right? What is it telling? So I do research. What else is it telling? That I have the ability to communicate and that I also have the ability to coordinate. And is there an ability to uh, make this better? Sure, of course, right? This is not the end all be all. This is simply here to help drive perhaps some creativity for you guys, hoping that um, you'll be able to kind of take this as a, as a uh, template format. And then look at this. Top performing administrative and research support with over eight years of experience in diverse medical environments. Outstanding reputation for maintaining excellent customer service and GCP, global um, clinical practice standards. Uh, experience succeeding in high demand environments. Successfully built and executed protocol for research pilots within a large longitudinal cohort. And so that's a lot, right? Anyone who understands research, that's gonna make sense. Who don't understand research, then it won't make sense. And so there's things in here showing that I have the ability to not just coordinate, but build from the ground up, right? That's what a pilot is. And so this is an opening statement that's trying to basically say, why do I have this title? Right, here's my title, and this is a short explanation of why. And you can tell I didn't, I didn't really put a lot of words that you would expect when having a conversation, a lot of filler words, right? I removed a lot of filler words just because I want to get to the point, right? I got limited real estate. Uh, at the same time, while you have limited real estate, any, if you have the idea that your resume should just be one page, you uh, have a very outdated notion of what you need to have on a resume. Right, that was something one page is because it was a human looking at it. Right, there's computers looking at it now, so it's pretty much pointless to only have a one page. In fact, you're probably going to hurt yourself if you only have it one page. Right, you'll see here that I have multiple pages. And now look at this. I created uh, in Word here. I created a table, uh, and so now I have got. Um, you know, I can have this areas of exper expertise. Then I can have professional experience here. Uh, you can see uh, within this table. Right, I've got things hidden, uh, so you can't you don't see the cells there, but I've got again different keywords. Right, if there's a computer that's listening for these keywords and no longer a person, well, how do I feed a computer? I just simply put it there and it looks for them. Right, volunteerism. What's something especially? I work at a, at a major university. What is it that they like? Volunteerism. Heck yeah. Yeah, and you know, point of contact for division leadership for data driven strategic decisions, decreasing wait times for patients. So what did I just do? I decreased wait times for patients, right? And maybe I have to then um, perhaps talk about that and justify it if they if they bring it up. It would probably help if I put a percentage base there. To be honest, um, it's still relatively new, and I wanted to put this on here just because there's there's things that you can have that are good ideas um, that you can always make better. Or I just thought of a way to make this better. I don't necessarily have the ability yet because I'm still waiting on data, and there's some things in the in the midst right now that are um, that were newly implemented that I just simply have to wait irons in the fire and that's part of what this is so I have a new thing here and so if you have a good idea figure out how to put it on there and then justify it and say oh well, look this like you know it's not just that I've done good stuff I'm still doing good stuff and yeah I wanted to throw it on there right it's important to me and so that's I, I would say that's why you would want to put something on there that you wouldn't necessarily be able to quantify in in concrete terms now, point of contact for advanced data analytics using multiple platforms, aiding as much as 40% increase in five months. How much? 40% increase, right? So I put specific in how in how much time? Five months. Wow, right? And so this is your clinical fill, and I do all the data. I do all the presenting, so I just have this. I know exactly what division I'm I'm thinking of here. Um, host collaborative meetings with leadership to determine actionable goals and follow up next meeting. So what do I do? We figure out actionable goals. What do we do then? Well, then we follow up on those actionable goals, right? It's one thing to determine a goal, but if you never follow up on it, what good is it, right? Uh, create an uh, operations report detailing areas of opportunity for immediate focus, improving division buy-in, right? Um, and so this is something, again, that is a little unquantified, right? Uh, division buy-in by how much, right? By a lot, by a little. And so, so this is something where uh, I have got anecdotes from my boss 
where I've had presentations and there's division leaders who typically just don't talk. They don't even uh, turn their camera on when we're doing Zoom meetings just because they just don't care. But I've actually been able to, to harness uh, their intellectual curiosity by providing data that they feel is actually valuable and they keep asking lots of questions and my boss is dumbfounded. And I'm actually the fourth iteration of my job. Uh, little did I know, uh, I thought I was the first, but apparently three others just failed at it because it's a very nebulous idea that takes somebody creative to, to figure it out, right? And so if you have the ability to be creative, right? I, I can't necessarily quantify my creativity, nor can I quantify how much ability it has uh, allowed me to, to kind of leverage opportunities throughout my life and negotiate ways through your know, pathways through my career and so part of this is creative and is that the best for a resume maybe not but is this better than your resume i don't know you tell me right and so um uh, create uh let's see successfully providing value as reported by division leadership where four others before me failed right four others so actually i was the fifth then uh, my fault so four others before me failed um and so what did I do? I took something and I succeeded where four other people failed. Man, I'm a badass, aren't I? Right? And that's the point of this resume. That doesn't mean I'm going to go and like grab a star out of the sky and let out some, you know, He-Man roar or like some Macho Man Randy Savage. <coughs> Man, I always thrash in my throat. Um, research coordinator. Right, so this is University of Utah as well. So you can see in here the different things. I don't need to read everything to you. I wanted to kind of read that so I can explain. Right, I'll you'll be able to to look at the you know the resume here, and I want you to consider if your resume doesn't look like this, does it one look better, and if not, what can you do to make it look like this? Right, education, volunteerism. So. <clears throat> This is what, did I, oh, here we go. So look at this, data manager, admin assistant. So this is very important. So look at that, Dead Moon Gaming. Well, what's Dead Moon Gaming? Well, Dead Moon Drive, bro, right? So I was a part of the Gorfiend uh, server uh, uh, um, in uh, World of Warcraft back in 04. So I got out of the army, around my ETS date is December 27th of 03, or rather was, I guess, because it came and gone. Um, and so in 04 by March, maybe, February, yeah, March, I think, picked up the game, was playing it, and played a druid, really loved druid, really loved the druid. It sucked that druids were really a shadow of a real player. <laughs> My inner bait didn't even belong to me half the time. Uh, and, anyway, a Dead Moon game. So Dead Moon Tribe was my guild. And so data manager, admin assistant. Well, I was, a, I was an officer within the guild. So certainly a manager. Right, I'm a guild manager. Right, this is also people management. As a as a guild manager, you have to you have to quell riots within the guild. People get pissed. Back when there's DKP, whew, man, you know the the loot system now is so much easier. But with DKP, boy oh boy, was it rough. And then especially playing as horde, and you get nothing but pally drops, and you can't even play pallies as horde, and it's yeah, it's insane. You know, uh, ally you know allies get uh, shaman drops. Can't use shaman the shaman stuff because they have pallies. And so it's super frustrating. Anyways, dealing with that, right? That's coming back to the people management that I have, and I can talk about that within my volunteerism and tie that in. So Dead Moon Gaming slash Stormbringer Entertainment, right? I'm, the guild I'm in right now is Stormbringers. Um, and so I've been gaming for a long time, but it's really, you know, 3-1. Uh, I, I should probably separate this out to be truthful. So it's really 3-1 um, of 04 to 10, well, 11, I guess about 1130, give or take, 1130 of 10. And then I picked it back up in 2021. So I guess that's not fair to be current, right? I need to update that. Um, and so that way I still have substantial, right, decades of, of time doing this. And, well, I guess not decades. Um, I have it detailed as decades of time. But I obviously have not, right? I just detailed I have basically six and a half years. You know, collected, processed, and categorized all assets of value and detail them online for easy user user interface. What does that mean? Well, you ever used eBay? Yeah, well, it's kind of like that. 
oh wow well that's cool yeah well that's how we did dkp right you had to do online reports you had to collect the data you had to process it you had to categorize it for for the different classes for the different people uh and then you detail it for people to know what their dkp is yeah, especially if you're not just running uh, tw uh 40 mans but you're also running 20 mans right zul garub uh you know encourage you know, etc you know, mentorship program helping others with public speaking and organizing slash displaying data via MS Excel. <clears throat> so you know, you become friends with people. I help people you know with how to do Excel spreadsheets, but then also like currently, you know, I take people through my routes on Mythic Dungeon tools, right? Mythic Dungeon tools, bro. I use Mythic Dungeon tools. Like, you're gonna say like, that's a skill? Of course, it's a skill, right? Think think if uh, if you play you know World of Warcraft right now and you're in Necrotic Wake, and you get up to Stitch Flesh. Right, you get to say six. Uh, so you get the third boss platform. Haven't pulled any any ads, and you got seventy three percent. Yeah, you know what happens? Yeah, you summon pride halfway through. So you kill the two the two mini ads that throw the cleavers. Right, so you clear everything there. The two mini uh, mini boss ads spawn that throw the cleavers, and then when, after that, you summon in the uh, left corner. Right, uh, I guess stage right um, as uh, Stitch Flesh is facing. Uh, you summon ads there. You're gonna kill one ad and summon pride. So then you're gonna have a whole, you know, you're gonna have the biggest ad there that's beating on you, right? Whatever that named uh, abomination is. And so you have pride with him. And then what happens? That if you happen to kill them before you kill pride, well then another set of ads, you know, are gonna populate because you're only getting about three, I think, two point eight percent, something like that, uh, from those packs. So if you're, and I think you only want to show up, if I recall, like sixty nine percent. So you, you so if you're up there four percent extra, man, you're hurting, right? So so mythic dungeon tools isn't important, right? It's incredibly important, right? Uh, how do I map out where I get my twenty percent and summon pride when it's safe, right? So tell me about a time when right I'm in an, in an interview. Or tell me about a time when you had a difficult project, um, and you know you had difficult time, you know me, meeting you know the deadline, and um, you know what, what did you do? Right or d just a, dif a difficult time, and, and how did you react? Right, w however that is going to be worded. Oh yeah, yeah totally. Uh, well, you know there was a project that we had, you know, with uh, you know Dead Moon Gaming. You know we, we had an issue with uh, kind of with processing, um, really kind of uh, the process implementation to make sure that we're actually following the right regulations. Um, you know as uh, you know as necessary. Um, and you know some regulations just on you know are you know just like you know any sort of rules they can be bent uh, no you don't want to go into that so some regulations um, you know are are more important than others right some you know in the same way that federal regulations might take precedent over local regulations so you've got to be able to go through that data figure out what's most important and so regulations you can then say you know you're regulating your mythic dungeon tools based upon Perhaps you know tyrannical versus uh, you know bolstering uh, versus inspired, right? Wh whatever. And um, and so you know processing. Uh, and, and in order to make sure that we were able to accomplish uh, on time, right? So you're being timed in Mythic Dungeons, so we could actually accomplish on time. So we meet our goal, our deadline, um, and actually follow uh, you know follow a um, implementable path by being able to you know seek. You know, I sought an online application, right? I saw the internet, online application. I was able to analyze my route. I was able to look and, you know, uh, analyze my route in which we followed our, uh, you know, our pathway. So I could recreate it. Did we actually follow the rules and the regulations? Um, analyze and strategically pinpoint uh, where any mistakes were made. So we could actually zip that up and make sure that in the future, you know, we're meeting our, our goals and our deadline, right? And so... I kind of talked, you know, you know, kind of out here in a very tangential, you know, tangential, you know, out there, and kind of, you know, went a little crazy, and didn't really give a, a direct answer like you were necessarily an employer, but I, I think you get the the idea, right, based upon this answer, how you could string together something like this, a comprehensive process improvement analysis based upon AAR after action review, uh, improving production by nearly fifteen percent, right, and so. Uh, for a while, I actually was, um, I, I had a bunch of plus 14s and plus 13s. I was having a hard time uh, getting any plus 15s. And then I was thinking like, do I, like, did I accidentally get here? And the answer was no. Yeah, I did not accidentally get to, you know, being able to tank plus 14s, right? 
um, and because there's just too much involved uh, with me tanking a plus 14. And uh, did I accidentally get there? No. Okay, well, do I know what I'm doing? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's open up Mythic Dungeon Tools. Okay, well, yeah, in many cases I did know exactly what I was doing. And then I re oh, it reassured me that I knew exactly when Pride was going to pull. And in cases like Necrotic Wake, where you can get pats or not get pats, uh, skip or not skip, people aggro, people don't aggro, I mean, all sorts of bullshit happens. And, or all sorts of stuff happens. And, you know, and you've got to be able to adapt. Um, and being able to, to figure out how best to, you know, to take your route. Right? I ended up uh, getting Keystone Master uh, in um, a couple of days, and wh what it was is I spent, uh, I spent time going through my Mythic Dungeon tools. Right, I spent about two hours going through each different dungeon, making sure that I knew exactly what I was doing. And then in order to time uh, 8 uh, plus 15s, I did it in, I think it was 12 runs. Um, and by the time you get to 15, a lot of people really know what they're doing. I was also the one who... Um, um, who made sure that my route was pristine, that I knew exactly what I was doing, that I could coordinate before, right beforehand, right halts of atonement. You know, a lot of times you pull you know seven ads at the beginning. Well, the the two other ads, you know, way in the back, right. One's an obliterator that's just going to stand there unless he's interrupted. And so when I timed it, I brought in a DK. I let him know, hey man, can you go ahead and grab that guy for me and just corral him and he's going to stand there like an a hole. And just sit there and cast. Uh, do you think you can do me a solid? Yeah, bro. And it worked out perfectly. It was great. And so, pretty, uh, pretty wonderful being able to uh, get that uh, assistance. But you can't really get that proper assistance if you can't convey, right, how to ask. And you may not necessarily be able to convey how to ask if you don't know what you're doing. And you may not know what you're doing if you don't pull up Mythic Dungeon tools. And so, I mean, it's incredibly important. And so, if you haven't considered that, I highly encourage you to figure out how to again add this and volunteerism, right? People love volunteerism. People want to pawn to be like, man, you volunteer. What a good person you are, right? And, you know, eat that up and make sure you lean on it. Uh, so you are, again, advocating for yourself in a manner in which is going to yield positive results. And, you know, you, became, you know, became a large shareholder by undertaking each business opportunity while maximizing human resource value, leading to nearly 50% reduction in loss through attrition. Right? People get really burnt out in raids. And people get really frustrated if you wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe. Having a good attitude really helps people. And ha especially back in the Molten Core days when, I mean, there's times where I, I remember with a casual guild, Dead Moon was not a hyper, uh, was, was not any sort of like hyper uh, crazy guild um, as far as pushing raids. We got, I want to say we got halfway through Encourage 40 before, um, before we got, or rather, uh, the Burning Crusade came out. We you know, were doing full clears of BWL. I want to say that we could clear Molten Core and BWL in four hours. Uh, but when we first started, we were taking four hours to wipe on like the second Core Hound, <laughs> which is not even like the first boss yet. And it's insane. And so, you know, there's a lot that goes into learning this. And like for you, for you to harness and harvest all this experience and all this time um, and then not use it to advocate for your for a better material condition i mean that's a real travesty and you know i highly encourage you to make sure that you are implementing what's what's best what skills that you have to offer and interviews are no time for weak speak resumes are no time for weak speak you you get the job yeah that's fine it's, it's fine to couch it and like hey you know i really think i can do this so i, I don't necessarily want to come off as any sort of uh you know conceited you know arrogant person Right? That's totally appropriate. But no, don't be, you know, and it's certainly fine to be like, hey, I don't want to come off as arrogant, but I think I can, I can do this, you know, in an interview. But don't be like, well, you know, I'm just not sure about my skills. You know, I've only been, do I've only been doing it for a year, right? Don't, no, I've been doing this for, for, for years. I've only been doing it for a year, right? And again, fake it till you make it. Remember that fake it till you make it is absolutely a viable strategy if you intend to make it. Because if you intend to make it, you're probably going to put in the resources and, and invest the time in order to make it. If you don't intend to make it, well, then it's likely you'll wash out. You might get lucky, right? And who knows? Maybe you will make it even if you don't intend to. But um, how do I help myself by advocating for myself in the best light? Step one, resume. Again, does your resume look like this? No? Does it look better? Maybe? Hopefully? If not, can you make it look like this? 
I've had a lot of people comment on my resume that they really like it. This is not the best resume. I'm sure that there's others out there that are, you know, that are better, but this has this resume here has probably got me uh, or I mean not this exact one because this is a new rendition because I, I remake them you know and slightly alter them but this format has probably netted me over 50 interviews I would think yeah that's probably about right um, maybe a little bit more and so does it work yeah and so this interview process the resume is not going to land you a job the resume is going to land you an interview so if I got 50 interviews with this resume did it do a job yeah and then it's my job to sell myself in an interview Something I wasn't always the best at. I'm far better at now, but um, yeah. Anyway, um, how again? How do you help yourself? Happy to help out. Happy to provide some ideas, and I hope that this has been meaningful for you. And um, I really love to hear any sort of success stories where uh, you created a resume yourself and then got an interview uh, because of my ideas. I, I'd love to hear that. That'd be great.